let's start with lecture 12, semi-definite programming for stability analysis. And uh, this is so-called SDP. I think from lecture 11, I draw a few categories of, uh, of uh, optimization problems. SDP is one of them, right? It's one special class of convex optimization that you can solve very efficiently. Uh, it's also very important for, uh, especially for control design and uh, also for robotic applications. And today we are going to, uh, based on the foundation of optimization, we, we introduced the last lecture. Today we are going to uh, introduce semi-definite programming and show you how it can be used to solve uh, many engineering problems, including controller and st stability analysis problems, okay? Uh, in order to define SDP or semi-definite programs, uh, we need to first introduce a very important and a special class of uh, constraints, which is called linear matrix inequalities. Typically, our constraints are given by, before it's given by if i less than or equal to zero, right? That's, un, that's kind of a standard inequality constraint. Right, and uh, the x satisfies this, x belong to Rn, such that x, f i x less than or equal to zero, we call that feasible, right? If we impose this as a constraint for the optimization problems. Uh, now today we are going to tell you a special class of these inequality constraints, are, which are in terms of uh, imposing semi-definiteness of matrix, okay? Let's directly start defining this, okay, for, uh, for let's just first define what linear matrix inequality really is. There are many different ways to state matrix inequalities. This is one standard form. And uh, so typically what I mean here is that I gave some symmetric matrices, F zero to Fm, they're all symmetric matrices and they are given, right? These are known. Okay, they are not decision variables, they are given uh, matrices. Okay, and then I can define a function, right? I can define a function of X where X is also in our, here I say is in RM. F is N by N matrices and I have M dimensional decision vectors, and the decision vectors defines with the function is kind of a fine function of X. So, and uh, let, let me give you an example so that's easier for you to see. Uh, for example, I can say X equal to X1, X2. Uh, let me write it here, okay? Let's say X special case R2, let's say X equal to X1 and X2. Then I can say this expression could be something like uh, uh, zero, one, zero, zero, one identity plus X one, 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 zero, oh, sorry, has to be symmetric, has to be symmetric, right? That's my requirement. All these matrices has to be symmetric to start with. And plus X two, uh, let's say two, zero, zero, negative one. Okay, that could be my numerical expression of a particular function of this, right? You can think about this function as a mapping, this function. See, in other words, this function maps from R2 to, Yunhan, what does this map to? This function, to what? Okay, so if you gave me a R2 vector, this function will return a two by two matrix, right? And this two by two matrix by definition is also symmetric. Do you agree? If I require, if I require those are symmetric matrices, then the mapped value is also uh, symmetric. It's also actually more specific is R2 to S2N. Uh, sorry, what, what, what's my notation? I forgot. Oh, no, S2, right? 
as two symmetric matrices. I didn't say whether it's a positive semi-definite or not, but it's given a two-dimensional vector uh, f of x construct a two by two matrices in this case. Right, and the inequality we care about is related to saying that f of x, so this matrix, this is the two by two matrix in this case, is positive semi-definite. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, x, y is a scalar, yes. So if I write it down further, if you want, I can write it like one. I mean, let me write the, uh, everything out, okay? This is a one plus x1, that's the first element, plus two x2, that's the second. Element. Yeah, x scalar. x1, x2 are scalar, right? That's the coordinate. And uh, the second coordinate is zero plus one plus zero is one. Uh, the second row first column is zero plus x1. Yes, second column, uh, second row second column is, is one minus x2, right? I agree. Okay, so this is giving me a two by two matrix and this matrix contains variables x1 and x2. And x1, x2 together is a vector, right? So it's a function of X may look a little bit confusing or hard, but it's nothing but you need to get used to this notation. Okay, uh, let okay before I before I uh, introduce a lot more property. Let's since ask people uh, student ask me, then I can directly show examples first, give you a concrete feeling what this inequality means, right? Suppose that's my inequality, okay? My first question is that, let's say my decision variable, it's what? It's x1, x2, x3, right? If I put them together as a vector, that's x, x1, x2, x3. That's my x, okay? So I say this function, has to be positive semi-definite. That will impose some constraints on X. Let me repeat. This inequality will impose constraints on X. Some X in R3 satisfy this constraint, some doesn't. And you can see more, uh, let's see more kind of uh, concrete uh, expressions for this inequality. Suppose, uh, first of all, I'm gonna ask you, is this a LMI? Based on my definition from last slides, LMI is anything that satisfies, can be written in this form. Okay, I'm asking you uh, this expression, bigger equal to zero, that's a fun, that's a imposed constraint on x vector, and I'm asking whether this constraint is a linear matrix inequality constraint. In other words, can you write this as the standard form that I introduced in the previous slide? Yunhan, can you do this? Okay, how do you do it? Uh, it's mm -hmm. uh, okay, yeah, that's true. Let's do the first uh, zero order term. Zero, one, one, zero, okay? Plus x1, one, zero, zero, zero. Plus x2, one, 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 zero. Excellent. How you can do this? By inspection, right? So this will be our f0, this is our F1, F2, and F3. So whenever you see these kind of inequalities, that is a linear matrix 
inequality. And this uh, symbol means what? Positive semi-definite. It's not its element is non-negative. It's this matrix is positive semi-definite. Okay, then I'm going to ask you, this guy is positive semi-definite. How do you check a two by two matrix is positive semi-definite? Well, there's many equivalent conditions that we introduced last lecture, right? Uh, the simple one, in this case, this is, a sim this is symmetric. Isn't it? It's a symmetric matrix. No matter what x2, x1, x3 is, it's a symmetric matrix. And in this case, all I need to check is this guy has to be positive semi-definite, uh, non-negative, right? x1 plus x2 bigger or equal to zero. That's first. Second, this guy has to be. The diagonal one has to be. Right? I'm not sure whether you know, uh, of course you can compute the value to check values, but in this case, we are just trying to check the, all the principal manners has to be uh, non-negative. And also the determinant has to be non-negative. These three conditions are equivalent to requiring this two by two matrix to be non-negative, a positive semi-definite. So how to compute the, the determinant? So it's, x1 plus x2 times x3 minus x2 plus x1 squared bigger equal to zero. Okay, so what essentially this statement means in a more elementary expression is these three inequalities. So I'm going to ask you, is this constraint set, this impose a constraint on X, right? Is this a linear constraint? So it's not linear, right? Yeah. It's not linear because of the last one, right? It's not linear. This is wrong. It's not linear. Now I'm going to ask you, is this a convex constraint? It's hard to tell, right? If you write this, it's hard to tell. But I can tell you all these major linear major inequalities are convex constraints. Not from this, uh, this kind of a detailed simple expression from more advanced, uh, for, for, well, we, we can go back to check it now, okay? So actually, this is yes. I'm going to tell you why this is yes now, all right? So that's, uh, that's the example. With this example in mind, I hope you have a concrete feeling about what linear matrix inequality really is. And let's, uh, let's discuss some important properties. Okay, so this function defined above, I'm going to say this function is a fine in X. Does this make sense to you or not, Johan? What does a fine means? We introduced before. That means you can write a scalar, a constant term plus a linear, purely linear term. Okay, and this linear term satisfies. This is a linear term. Linear term satisfies g of alpha x equal to alpha g x. Okay without a fine. So this is a fine in X. X is a vector. And it maps a vector to a matrix. If this bothers you, you think about matrix as another vector. This case is two by two matrix. You can think about it as a, a four dimensional element. Okay, if that helps you. But it, to me, it doesn't matter. It maps from a vector to a matrix. Another important thing is that whenever you see this matrix inequality constraint, it's nonlinear, but convex. So I'm going to ask maybe Yang Xing to prove it. 
how to prove it, this is convex. By how to prove this is convex by convex definitions, right? You just need to check, right? Suppose I call this guy, uh, let's define this guy as E. That's my constraint, right? E is defined as this set. Uh, all I need to show is that show E is convex. By definition, that means if we pick arbitrary x and y in E, then I should say alpha x plus one minus alpha y, the line segment connecting these two points has to be belong to E for all alpha. Oh, sorry, from R alpha from zero to one. This is called convex combination of these two points. Right, uh, we need we need to show that. Okay, we 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 are not sure about it yet, right? <clears throat> so can you show this, Yang Xiu? Okay, um, so how do you check whether this guy? So this guy belong to this means what? Okay, so first of all, x belong to E, y belong to E, tells us what? x satisfy this inequality. y satisfy this inequality, that's all it means, right? So what we have is f of x, it's positive semi-definite, f of y, it's positive semi-definite. So we have these two conditions. Okay, now we need to check this guy in E. All we need to check is what? So we need to show if alpha x plus one minus alpha y is positive semi-definite. Is that true? If we can show this, then of course we're done. Definitely, that makes sense to you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> when you show this guy it's a positive semi-definite, let's check. We don't know yet, right? Let's check. Let's check, then uh, <clears throat> if we plug in, this will be what? I can write it down, I can write it out. So this is the R alpha x plus one minus alpha y equal to, uh, this term does not depend on x and y, right? So it's still here, right? It does not depend on, well, anything, only thing depend on x and y is, uh, x is, uh, is in here. So this is plus g of alpha x plus one minus alpha y. So I can say alpha g of x plus, one minus alpha g of y because g is linear. This should be fine, right? Um, uh, now we can say because i of zero is alpha plus one minus alpha f zero, right? So I can factor out uh, so let me skip this, uh, uh, let me copy that down. Then skip this, I will say, this will be alpha times f zero plus g of x, okay? Plus one minus alpha f zero plus g of y. All right, huh, I think it's really bad. Uh, let me make sure we have enough space. Ah, wrong size, okay. Mm. 
Okay. Uh, let, me, let me copy that down, sorry. So let's do this. So this part is <clears throat> saying, let me skip that, uh, that term, okay? Alpha times F0 plus G of X plus one minus alpha F0 plus G of Y, okay? That tells us this equal to of F one minus alpha of F Y. <clears throat> So I know this guy is positive semi definite. That means belong to S, let's say N, this, right? And this guy, by definition, we know is also from uh, semi positive semi definite. And I have two matrix in this positive semi definite set. Then I have a complex combination of this. Do you think it belongs to this? Why? Let's say, is this zero because due to this one is convex. Remember the term I call is the positive semi-definite cone. And this is a cone and a convex, and this cone is acute. Uh, I think that's the property we, we introduced before. Actually, you can prove it fairly easily to show, to show, given arbitrary two positive semi definite matrix, the convex combination is a positive semi definite as well. You can show by just the definition of a positive semi definiteness. I don't want to repeat that. <clears throat> okay, so now we see that no matter how, uh, how complicated, this can be a simple case, but it's still hard for us to see immediately this set is convex. But from, from this part, we know this set is, is convex. Okay. Any questions? So let me add a remark here. So this convex, is convex? Yes. So this is, uh, Nonlinear and uh, but convex constraint. Okay, looks okay. Now we move to the next level, a little bit more complicated. Uh, since I have one more slide here, I will just use my space. Okay, here. <clears throat> Let's say generalize it to even matrix variable. Okay. To me, matrix, vector, scalar are the same. Let me repeat. Scalar, vector, matrix, they are the same. They are just one point in Rn or R or in R or in R n by n or n squared it's fine right so it's just a list of numbers depending on how you arrange, arrange them they just uh, <clears throat> they should be essentially the same now i'm going to ask you maybe in Han this case uh, <clears throat> suppose i have let's say uh suppose now i have a decision variable which is not small little uh, vector anymore let's say this is a, a two by two matrix two by two matrix, okay? Uh, it's a decision variable. Okay, let's uh, write it down, will be x11, x12. I want to be, to be, I want it to be symmetric. I would just say uh, two one, but one two and two are the same, okay? So let's say, uh, let's write it to one, that's fine. X two two. So this is my decision variable, that's a matrix. Uh, now I construct a function, okay? This function maps from a matrix to a, let's say four by four matrix to make things a little bit harder. So how I define it? I will define it as capital X is a matrix. 
I define, I construct a four by four matrix as the follows. I will say this guy is X, it's a two by two, right? And this part, I will say this is a one, one, zero, one. Okay. And uh, this part, I will, uh, I can say this is a, uh, uh, X, uh, no, this has to be symmetric. Let's uh, let's do the symmetric one. So it's one, one, zero, one. And that's guy, this guy is X plus identity of two by two. I use X to construct a four by four matrix. And I'm going to ask Inhan if I impose this guy as a part semi-definite condition or constraint, is this a linear matrix inequality? Yes. By yes, you mean that it can be written in the form that we originally defined, right? So how do you do this? So F0 is uh, zero. All zeros, right? So let's write it down here. So F0 is zero, 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 zero. Uh, one, one, zero. One, one, zero, one. zero. One, one, zero, one. One zero one one uh i two two so G, let's write it this is my f zero okay that's the constant term plus what some linear term let's say this is x one one that's my first element of decision variable or well, you can do matrix form but I want to write it in a more uh, complete way, this zero, 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 all zeros, others. Is that true? No. Oh, no, 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 here. So there's a, there's a guy, one guy here. So this is one, zero, zero, zero. Yeah. Okay, good. You followed me, that's good. So <laughs> X uh, one, two, what about X one, two? Zero, zero one. Zero, zero. If I impose x one two, you can let's say uh, uh, let me correct this. So one two has to be two one. Let's put it at one two as well. Only three this is a variable, right? So that will be uh, this part will automatically have a one here. There's capital zero, capital zero. Uh, the same thing here, right? And plus, oh, sorry, there's no plus sign, it's times. Okay, another one is x22, two, two, uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, right? 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so I have what? This is my f0, f1, f2, f3. Okay, so it can be written in the previous form. Okay, hopefully I don't need to write this down every time. You should be able to recognize this is a LMI, linear matrix inequality. Whatever decision variable you have, if the function is a linear function or a fine function of this decision variable, either vector or matrix, this thing is a linear matrix inequality. If I ask you to prove it, you should be able to write it down like this. If you want a little bit more general discussion, that will be here. Typically, I introduce this more general one for you, but I think the example is clear enough for you to. Okay. So uh, I don't have need to have a Rn. Before it was Rn, right? Now it a, it's can be arbitrary, finite dimensional, real vector space and make it, make it a little bit more general. In fact, um, how to say, not only uh, here can be, let's say can be Rn, right? Or Rn by N can be a matrix, okay? And can also be uh, polynomials. If you have a finite order of polynomials, it, it has few finite number of uh, uh, coefficients or decision variables. 
it can be also be that. Okay, let's not worry about that. That will relate to some of squares, um, which are cool stuff. But but I think this is good enough for now. All right. Uh, <clears throat> as long as this mapping is a fine from X to the symmetry matrix, very good. A fine or not, you should not check them by calculating numbers. You should be able to prove it or see it by the definition of fine. If a real scalar times something, you can factor that out, that's linear. And uh, <clears throat> we have a definition for a fine mapping and you should be able to check. For example, this guy is a fine with respect to X. Okay, if I write it, there will be F zero plus G of X and this term is linear in X. So this three term plus scatter is G of X. And this thing is linear in X. Why is linear X? You can just check G of alpha X equal to alpha G of X. For sure. You can just plug in, you can verify that. Okay, so. <clears throat> um, as long as these guys are fine mapping from this symmetry matrix, imposing this fx positive semi definiteness is a linear matrix inequality in variable x. Okay. In order to transform to standard form, we can choose a basis vectors of this space. What uh, Ying Han just did is find a set of basis vectors. It's only, the, okay, in this case, in this case, uh, I've mapped from a R, uh, I would say R3, a subset of R3, a three dimensional space. And the least of this is a basis vector of that space. Anyway, if you don't like the general definition, just look at this uh, example, it should be okay, right? And essentially we are looking at these terms, the basis vectors are these three matrices in this case. Okay, let's look at the example. Any questions so far? Uh, let me let me um, let me write it another way. Give you a few more examples. Suppose now suppose X is R N by M. Uh, let's not use general term. Let's say two by three. Okay, it's not square anymore. Okay, so like I define this f x as uh, two by three is two rows, right? So it's uh, x that's two by three and uh, zero zero one. This is three by three now, right? So I say this guy is positive seven definite. Is this a matrix linear matrix inequality? If you don't like, I can write it like this. Like an x11, x12, x13, x21, x22, x23, right? Three rows, three columns. Is this a matrix inequalities in terms of x? Yes or no, Yunhan? Yes. Okay, why? Because you can transform to this. Now you don't need to discuss that. Because this guy is a fine function. Even uh, this is a fine function of x. Is this a linear function of x or not? If we be more precise, is this a linear in x or not? Is this linear? Uh, not linear. Well, as I said, linear affine typically are used interchangeably, but, but let's be precise, it's not linear, it's affine because you have this constant term. Because f alpha x does not equal to alpha f of x. Because this guy doesn't scale. See what I mean? Because that's the fine term, the, the, the okay. <clears throat> anyway, but it's a fine. By our discussion here, a fine is fine. If you like, you can choose the basis vector similar to this example, you can compose or transform back to the standard linear matrix inequality form. I hope everything is okay. It's very kind of a important and also uh, 
the, the, the easiest case. I wanted to understand the easy case so, so we can discuss more advanced stuff easily. So let's look at a interesting, more application-oriented example. The example I'm asking you is that find conditions on matrix P to ensure that V of X is a Lyapunov function for a linear system. Do you still remember what's the condition for a function to be a Lyapunov function? If Yangxing, two conditions. First one is what? Let's say V is what? V is positive definite. What did I call this condition? Yes. I want you to have some term to you can you can associate with the all the X behavior is observable from V. Right? Unless X is zero, V won't be zero. Right? V convert to zero means X has to convert to zero completely. That means what I mean by bad behaviors are observable from the the the, the optimal function. Okay. <clears throat> Second what? <laughs> the Li, uh, Lubin. Uh, what is the negative semi uh, uh, minus, minus V. Minus V? Okay. V or L, so V dot along the vector field V dot is negative definite. Negative semi-definite is fine, but here we think about uh, asymptotic convergence in negative definite, right? So this guy, what do I mean by this guy is gradient of V transpose times, times the vector field, right? Is AX. Remember? So that means a decreasing, right? Along the closed loop trajectory, the function decrease, the value of function decrease. Okay, if we impose these conditions, one means if V is positive definite, one means P has to be positive definite. That's the, exactly the definition of positive semi definiteness for the matrix P. In the second one, do you remember? I can, I can, I can copy that here, okay? V dot, it's negative definite. That's typically means X transpose A transpose P plus P times A. X is for all X, right? So that uh, means A transpose P plus P A less than uh, this kind of a curly less than zero. It's negative definite. Okay, so that gave us two conditions. The first one is this. This is my first condition. Second one is this guy. Means this is the negative definite. This is my second condition. So all these conditions are imposed one and two are conditions in with respect to P, matrix P. I, I didn't tell you what P, suppose we're looking for a P, right? We're looking for a matrix P such that V of X is a Lyapunov function. So I'm telling you uh, in conditions in P, they are Linear matrix inequalities with respect to P. I would say now uh, this is for P. 
Is this clear to you, Yinghan? Uh, One and two are linear matrix inequalities with respect to P. Is that true or not? The first one is sure, yeah. right? Because P is positive definite, it's, it's F is, okay, it's, it's definitely true. Um, if you like, we can go through this one more time, but it's the last time. So we will not uh, do these baby steps later on. I hope you are fine with it. What I mean by these two are, make sure any call the LMIs, I really mean they can be written in the linear major inequality standard form, okay? If I call this guy P, I will say P11, P12, P12 suppose it's uh, symmetric, P22. I have three variables. P is a matrix variable, but in fact, we only have three dimensional uh, freedom, okay? We can define, we can define, you call it basis vectors in this case, I will say, um, I'll call that IJ is, um, let me just say that. Let me say the first basic vector one, two is first one. So the first row, second column is, uh, it's, it's not like, it's, 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 it's unit. And uh, because it's symmetric, we'll have this one, let's say, one one is one zero 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 and the two two is uh, zero 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 one okay <clears throat> these are three basis vector for p okay so then p can be written as uh, summation let's say ij uh, let's call that p ij e ij Uh, I think, I think, I think I need to eliminate uh, the, hold on, yeah, I need to eliminate uh, the, the, uh, I want to, I don't, I don't want to double count the, uh, the diagonal term. I don't know how to write it. Anyway, I think you're fine. Only three terms, okay. <clears throat> So overall, we will have, uh, this is just only three terms. I can write it down. Okay, the three, three terms. And these three terms are in terms of variable, these three terms. And overall, I will say one and the two in this term can be written like, the first one is, uh, is a summation, summation P I J, E I J is positive definite. And the second one is negative because this is, we wanted negative definite, right? So the negative will be positive semi definite. So this guy will be, uh, let's not use positive, this is a positive definite. And the other one is summation, summation P I J. A transpose times EIJ plus EIJ times A bigger zero. Everything is linear. A transpose times P will be times each of these three terms. Okay, because this guy's scalar, you can factor out. So it's just, uh, all the thing will apply to the basis vectors, okay? Then this is a coefficient. And then this guy will be my Fi's, right? You see what I mean? This will be, these are X, these are F. So overall, it's a standard linear matrix inequality, okay? So looking for a matrix which satisfies or make a function, a Lyapunov function for a linear system becomes solving a linear matrix inequality problem. Let me repeat again. 
finding a Lyapunov function in this case, just need to solve a linear matrix inequality. And you know this inequality is a convex constraint. So it it's can be easily checked. So whether it's true or not, you can easily verify that. You're with me? Any questions? Well, I hope this, uh, this are kind of, a, <clears throat> I think look at the example to start understand uh, this somehow a little bit abstract things, okay. Uh, I hope you can recognize linear matrix inequality very easily now. And, uh, but you need one more tool, which are very useful in general, it's called sewer complement lemma. I'm not going to prove it for you, but oh, the proof is given here. Okay. So what this, does this lemma say is that a matrix of this form, it's positive definite or positive semi-definite, they're the same, okay? Positive definite, if and only if this guy is positive definite and uh, this matrix of this form is positive definite or they're equivalent to C is positive definite and A minus that is positive definite. So, 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 so you don't need to memorize the particular formula. And uh, uh, the reason is that, the, the reason is true is that because of, you can, you can verify this identity, okay? You multiply the left out, you will see the right. Because of these identities, uh, this, this is my M, this is my M, okay? I mean, suppose this two, right? Suppose you, you verify this, then I mean it's positive semi-definite or positive definite if and only if each of this are positive definite because this is diagonal now. The reason is that this is a congruent transformation. This is T transpose, this is my T. The first term is a transpose, not the inverse, is transpose of the third term. Can you see that? It's a transpose of that. And this is called congruent transformation. And the symmetric matrix is, is, is uh, sorry, sorry, positive semi-definite set is invariant and the congruent transformation. Um, we review that or introduce that on lecture uh, 11. Okay, this guy is the same. So that, that's where you have two, these two kind of equivalent condition. All right, I'm going to show you how you can use this to, uh, to discuss or recognize more complicated linear matrix inequalities. Okay, let's uh, take a break. All right, uh, let's continue. So this uh, sure company lemma is uh, very useful for us to, uh, to convert, especially this term, okay, actually to transform Nonlinear quadratic or bilinear matrix inequality to linear ones. Okay, so I will ask maybe Ying Han again. Do you think, let's say the decision variable, suppose decision variable is B, is this a linear, is, is this an alamai or not in B? No, right, Liu Ben. Is this a linear matrix inequality in B or not? Uh, no, it's not, because it's not a linear function of B. You just think about B is a, is a scalar, whatever a variable. It's it's a quadratic in B, right? But you know, the the question hasn't finished. But do you think M is a linear matrix inequality in B or not? I mean, it's LMI in B. And this guy, this equivalent condition is quadratic in B, not a linear matrix inequality in B. But these two are equivalent. You see what I mean? So oftentimes when you see this, it actually can be converted itself. It's not a LMI, but it can be converted to a LMI by lifting to a higher dimensional uh, matrix space. 
Okay, so that's the main uses of this. Let me give a, a more concrete example. Suppose, uh, let me see. Um, let's do a very simple one. Let's say, suppose I have a matrix variable. Let's say I, uh, X belong to R two by three. It's not square. It's not square. Um, suppose I have a matrix in color constraint X, X transpose less than equal to identity. What's the dimension of this, by the way? This is two by three, this is three by two. Overall, it's two by two matrix, okay? So this is not a LMI. This is not linear matrix inequality because it's quadratic in X. It's not a fine or linear in X. If you define IFX, is x x transpose if you do x r of x is f squared right it's not it's not linear at all of course linear into check other conditions but at least the very simple one doesn't satisfy it's not linear <clears throat> but we can use the uh, super complement lemma to transform that to a linear matrix inequality by uh, let's let's first move things to the left, i less than equal to zero. Okay. In other words, uh, uh, i minus x x transpose bigger or equal to zero. That's fine, right? The negative positive definite means a negative definite means the positive of this matrix is positive semi definite. Uh, this guy by the sewer complement lemma. This is equivalent to this guy. It's equivalent to I X transpose X I bigger or equal to zero. This will be my M. Do you agree? In order for this guy to be positive semi-definite, I need, suppose this is my A, A is positive definite, and the C minus B transpose, uh, C minus B transpose A inverse B, A is identity, right? So it's just this. Okay, these two are equivalent. And now I have uh, this guy is a uh, LMI. This is a LMI. No question, right? There's a trick that's uh, uh, once you, you just keep in mind, whenever you see bilinear term or quadratic term, uh, many, many times you can, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can change it to a linear matrix inequality by, <clears throat> Uh, by using the super complement lemma, okay. All right, after defining, so so far we only defined the, uh, what do I mean by linear matrix inequality in the semi-definite program SDP is just a linear program subject to, uh, let me change my wording. It's just a minimi minimizing a linear cost function subject to linear matrix inequality constraint. Okay, there are different ways to state semi-definite program. Uh, one kind of a convenient way is this. Minimize a linear function of X. This is a linear function, linear function of X. Suppose this is a Rn, and subject to linear matrix inequalities. And also some equality constraints, but that's not essential. So the linear equality constraint, this guy, can be eliminated by, of course, that means you, you can, you can, you can, you, this guy impose some constraint on X, you can eliminate those constraints so that you have other uh, free variables. 
啊。OK， 好的。And uh, so essentially, uh, uh, SDP can be viewed as minimizing or optimizing linear functions subject to linear metric inequality constraints. So SDP is a particular class of convex optimization. You have why is convex optimization? This is my constraint set, right? This set is constraint set. It's convex. Okay. Isn't it? Why is it convex? I may ask you, okay? Cos is convex, so for a linear, but it's also convex. Why the constraint set is convex? We know, I just show you LMI is convex, right? And I then I said this equality can be eliminated, but let's say we don't eliminate. So I have another constraint which is linear. Why these two together give you a convex? You have an intersection of two convex sets, it's convex, right? So that's a uh, well, you can think this way. No matter how many other constraints I add, each of them, as long as each of them is convex, then the overall constraint size is convex. So it's optimizing a convex function subject to the convex uh, uh, constraint set. So it's a convex optimization problem. And uh, actually, optimizing nonlinear but convex cost, not linear, uh, subject to line my constraint is also a convex optimization problem. Uh, but we, but it's not a SDP. Okay, SDP refers to specially optimizing this linear cost subject to LMIs. Okay, that's the definition or one way to define it. Uh, <clears throat> but the standard form for SDP, that's the convenient form, okay, in terms of uh, vector variables. A standard form of SDP is the matrix variable, okay? It's of the following form. That's a standard prime. You know the primal and the dual, right? The primal form, and uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's the following. So it's a uh, this guy now. It's a uh, it's a symmetric x. It's a symmetric matrix, right? It's R n by n, and uh, it's S n. It's symmetric matrix, and they required it to be positive semi-definite. And uh, minimize some linear function of x, which is c dot. This is the inner product. Okay, this uh, c dot x. What I mean by this is the trace of c transpose x. Okay, this inner product between the two matrix, and uh, I think this is nothing but summation over i, summation over j, c i j, x i j. Okay, and C and the X are, are in the same kind of R M by N matrix. All right, uh, so it's just a trace basically, right? So for example, I can give you an example. I can say minimize um, X one one plus two X one two subject to X one two uh, Subject to let's say x one one plus x two two equal to two and uh, x one one x one two x one two x two two this matrix positive semi definite. So if I write like this, this is exactly this form. Okay. So this way you can construct C to to pick the correct. Thing, right, so in this case C will be uh, one, uh, one, one, zero. Okay, the inner product of this will give you uh, this thing, right? And uh, and you can pick AI. AI is also the one that pick particular element of X and impose a equality constraint. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, 
Any questions? Okay. So whatever, uh, well, you can pick P, uh, C, and A to impose uh, linear constraints related to the matrix variable X. And this is a standard prime form. And actually, the SDP has a dual form. Do you know this is a convex optimization problem, right? This is a prime problem. And uh, you can think about this as minimize F P of X subject to a lot of things, G of X less than equal to zero. That's my primal optimization problem. And if I do the dual, actually I'm gonna ask you to derive this dual. That's a little bit challenging, but it is worth trying. The dual problem is of this form. It's maximize some linear function. Why is the dual variable, dual optimization variable, which is uh, it's actually has the same dimension of the equality constraint of the prime one and subject to another linear measure inequality constraint. This looks more like the Alamai, the standard form of Alamai. <clears throat> and uh, you can derive this by standard uh, uh, Lagrangian duality method. Uh, I, I think I will give a homework on this. So, so this is a homework, okay? And dual form three, is equivalent to one after eliminating the equality constraint one. So this one is of the same form of this more convenient form. All of them are the same, okay? Let me, let me put this way. All, all of them the same. Sometime you start from this formulation, sometime you start from this one, that's a little bit more convenient. And the dual one is equivalent to, to the first. The third one is equivalent to the first uh, if you don't care about the equality constraints, okay? But the mathematically, they are all the same. <clears throat> For SDP weak duality, because it's a convex optimization, it has actually strong duality. If it satisfies the constraint qualification, right? Uh, let's recall what we did last time. For any optimization problem, the weak duality always holds. Do you remember that? What do I mean by that? So the dual always give a lower bound of the prime. So in this case, so for any primal feasible, dual feasible variable, for any X, as long as it's feasible, for any Y, as long as Y is feasible of the dual problem, then you always have the dual is lower, has a lower bound property, right? The primal one, always stay above that. So when they are the same, that's a zero duality case. In this case, we can, we can see that from here as well. So <clears throat> let's say X is feasible. Y is feasible. That means for three, satisfy this inequality constraint, okay? Then I'm going to check uh, IFP of X, that's my primal cost, minus IFD of Y, that's my dual cost for this feasible Y. I didn't say X is optimal, Y is still optimal at all. I just need, they are feasible, okay? Then this guy should be a non-active number. So the primal cost always stay above the dual cost. Okay, so let's see that. Uh, this will be C dot X, right? Uh, let, let me write it in the, well, that's fine. C dot, C dot X minus FD, which is B transpose Y. Okay, what is B transpose Y? Uh, uh, hold on, B is what? B is this guy, right? It's BI uh, satisfies this. So 
overall I have C dot X minus submission. This is the inner product of the two vectors. So it will be submission over I, uh, Y I times B I. But it's B I is A I dot X. Are you with me? The B is A I dot X. Okay. So then I have, uh, this X is independent of I, so I can factor them out. So C minus summation I, Y I A I dot X. Dot is inner product. Inner product definitely satisfies this, uh, uh, this kind of a, this, uh, association rule. Okay. <clears throat> so what I know, this guy is positive semi-definite because y is still feasible. Are you with me? Because y i minus c is negative definite, so c minus i is positive definite. So this guy is positive definite. This guy is positive semi-definite because it is a primal feasible. So overall it's bigger equal to zero because a positive definite, B positive semi-definite implies the trace of A transpose B is bigger than zero. That's what I did ask you to prove it. The positive semi-definite cone is acute. The angle between them is always smaller than half pi. That's what I said before. So that's a property uh, that are useful oftentimes. Uh, this is because due to PSD cone is acute. Any two elements in there, the angle spanned by them is less than half pi. Okay, we somehow, but we don't have to prove it because any, any kind of uh, optimization, nonlinear optimization satisfies weak duality. It's just uh, a, a verification. And also, because it's a, it's a, it's a convex optimization, so strong duality always hold under Slater condition. So Slater condition in this case will be exist X strictly positive definite. Exist, all you need is X and uh, equal to BI. <clears throat> That's it. I don't think we need to worry about constraint qualification that much, but typically if you have uh, Complex problem. It's uh, oftentimes the strong duality holds. Okay, so many control and optimization problem can be formulated or translated into SDB problems, and there's a efficient tools can be used to solve it. 